you know, I don't know how I missed this one, but boy, am I glad I found it this time. Uh, you could almost say I was watching it because I have a shared interest in its topic. So, without further ado, let's look at In Dreams. What's going on, Dungeon Dwellers? Welcome back to Dave's Dungeon. I am, as always, the one, the only, Dungeon Master Dave. Bringing you the fright and delights of modern adventures in media. Today, we're looking at In Dreams. Now, if you've never seen me do this before, or just as a quick refresher for those of you who... Have I review each film based off five criteria, and those are plot, special effects, tension, gore, victim and killer, etc. Each one of these criteria has 10 points in it available, and the score out of 50 gets a grade. <clears throat> so, I also do a non spoiler section before I do the spoilers, so if you're listening along to this right now, no worries. Um, but for those of you who are here, the TLDR, I like this film. Uh, it's not the best horror film by any stretch of the imagination. But it still, it still captures something that is weird and is strange and it's horrific. And while some of this setup is beyond sort of comprehension, and I'm sure there are places like what this film sets up. I feel like that's part of what keeps this film from being, I don't know, relatable in a way. You know, I'm not, I'm not so sure how much people are going to buy the setup for the film, much less believe that this is a place. I mean, once you get kind of past that, the film's fine. It just, the, the setting for this is a little wonky. Um, and for those of you who have watched the film already, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, also, God, get out of here, fly. Um, also, the setup for the victim and killer is a little weird. Um, and that kind of goes to the plot of how all of this is happening. Um, so, for those reasons, I'm going to give the plot on this like a 7. Uh, it's not great. It's not bad. It's It just needs... It needs more. Um, it really needs more. And in what it needs is it needs a competent writer who can write dialogue. Because um, other than and Annette Benning and Robert Downey Jr., I really feel like the rest of this cast could have been, I mean, just completely done without. And I'm... I'm saying that with uh, some really actually decent actors in this film. Other than the principal two, you could have done just about anything else with anybody else. And the film would have been fine. Uh, but that's not necessarily saying anything or a good thing. You know, I would have rather cared about the rest of the story. But uh, you really can't. You really, there's no other redeeming characters to kind of discuss there. Um, special effects. It's the late 90s, early 2000s problem of special effects where they have, they're trying to figure out a new way to do it. And it's not, it's not good, it's not bad. And it just kind of, I want to say it it's a little jarring the way they kind of do all the special effects because you're never quite sure and it's part of the credit to the movie I will say um you're never quite sure what's going on um when things are weird let's just say it that way um because you don't know how much of it's real and how much of it's not and how much of it's you know, there's a lot to this, and we'll, we'll be able to talk about that a little deeper in the spoiler section. Tension, tension starts 
I mean, I've seen an episode of Numbers like this. Let's let's put it like that. Daytime television did this better and in a more salient and solvable way with a gimmick than this film did. But saying that, this film had better tension across the entirety of its runtime and actually made me fear what was happening and actually developed it beyond a single case. So... I really appreciate that. I also appreciate how the the dramatic action of the film, which helps build the tension, makes it personal as well. Um, but that's for spoilers. Um, so for that reason, like I said, seven. This is like a seven. I would give the medium tension an eight. Because it, it, it does work, but at the same time, it... Uh, We'll talk about some stuff that might not work for you in the spoilers. Um, gore. I really got to say, there's not a whole lot of gore to this film. And, well, I say that. Um, just, it's not m much to it. There's not much to it. And I feel like this is where... Of all the scary stuff that happens, this is probably where the film is, depending on what you want from gore, the most mundane and average. Uh, I'd give it a six. I mean, even the sort of thing at the end, whatever you want to call that, because it wasn't a final fight chase scene. Um, yeah, that didn't quite work the way I think they wanted that to work, and it didn't. I've seen similar scenes from movies that were just as weird, if not weirder, that did a better job of sort of ramping that up to an appropriate place where it should have been. So for that, I'm going to give it a six. And Victim Killer. I think this is the best thing this film has going. I really do. I, I do think... Hold on, I'm going to go ahead and do the math while I'm sitting here jabbering on. So, 7, 7, 7, and 6. Um, I do think this is the part of the movie that, that gets this the most right. And Annette Benning and Robert Downey Jr. are really great in the film. And I'm glad to see Robert Downey Jr. has... Um, That type of character in his bag, you know? Um, Annette Benning has played a mom before. That's no spoiler to anybody if you've ever seen her in a film. She usually plays some sort of mother. Um, but the, the whole role of what she's playing in the film is new for her. And that felt good. Um, and then once it kind of becomes the mom who can also do that other side, it, it she really does kind of bring the role to life. And if you're any fan of hers, you know, this is as good as she has ever been. So, you know, and Robert Downey Jr. is realistically a workable character in this. And I, I love how the dynamic between the two of them works. But at the same time, the movie does absolutely nothing to explain how that works. Or what kind of came about to build that link between them. Other than just, he just kind of threw darts at our phone book. But with that being said, I think even with the problems and even with... The sort of, it, it does go to sort of silly place. It's sort of, you could laugh at it and go, okay, this is a ridiculous place. But I don't mind. I saw what they were trying to do. And this is sort of the strongest element they had. So you might as well drive it to its 10, you know. So I'm going to give the killer victim thing a nine because that seems fairer and we're back to 36 out of 50 so we're back at that c range and like i said it's i can see where i missed it i can see sort of why nobody really talked about it 
but it was a decent performance given when it came out and when what all was around it that I don't know why anybody would have missed this film for any particular reason. Should you watch it? If you like old horror films that are more thrillers, less slasher, um, with a weird zhuzh, I'll say, of psychic ability slash, you know, other things that uh, I would have rather they did a different way, but, yeah, we'll talk about that in spoilers. Oh, man. And that accounts for a lot of what I took off the from the movie is sort of my own take of how this all felt didn't work as well as I would have liked, but I can see where they had their issues and where they were trying to do stuff and it just... It, it was on me to accept it and appreciate it or not. And it just wasn't to my taste. So I'm not going to say this is a bad movie. I'm just going to say it is a movie of its time and a movie of its caliber. And you can skip it. You can absolutely skip it. It's not something I say is a critical must-see, gotta catch. You can skip it. But at the same time, if you don't mind horror films that, you know, don't lay everything out, but at the same time give you at least a decent view into what's going on, this is a worthwhile movie to watch. But with that said, I think that's going to do it for the non-spoiler section of this film. Um, or review. Uh, let's not talk about it like it's a film, it's a review. We're, we're doing the review here. But if you enjoyed it, make sure you leave us a like. We really appreciate it. it Let me talk here. Come on. Ha. Ah. If you like this video, make sure you leave a like. Because that tells YouTube that we're doing a good job. I'm obviously not right now, but I'm trying. <laughs> make sure you subscribe for more of this. And ring the bell so you know whenever I drop. Inevitably the next episode. Of course, it's not going to be on time, so you might as well ring that bell. It's going to let you know whenever it comes along. I'm going to catch it, I promise. Man, that fly needs to go away. But anyway, that's going to do it. Make sure you run away now, because we're getting into some, I guess, spoilers. <laughs> uh, the movie kind of tells you this in the synopsis, so I don't know that you necessarily need a spoiler, but the lady's psychic, and nobody believes her. So, yay, we have a, a woman that's not believed, even though she's telling the truth. Uh, that's not a trope we can't live without in horror. You know, the victim being believed is usually one of the hardest things for... Well, let's put it this way. It's one of the hardest tropes to get away from in horror. Because so much of life tells us that victims aren't listened to. Just kind of there. Um, but, and... To be honest, I don't know that I would have believed her story given she just kind of shows up and tells you, hey, this is what I dreamed and I have no answers for it, but this is kind of what I saw. But at the same time, I would have swore the police have a, have a procedure or at least some sort of thing that if they get a random tip, I swear I'm going to snatch you out of the middle there, that if they get a random tip that they go check it out and... Let me check. Let me do this real quick. You know, even if this lady is someone I think is mentally unstable, I would have still been like, hey, can we check? Can we call that hotel? Just call. Be like, hey, can you check this room? Yeah, sure. Oh, my God. You know, <laughs> You could have had that information like two days ahead of time or something. You know, you could have had, you. there were things that could have been done and, and information that the movie just ignores that could have actually been something that played a little bit more and gave a little bit more sort of insight and, and sort of the surroundings or pointed the finger or misdirected and this sort of also plays into the other problem I had with the plot of like, how did this linkage happen? You know, they don't spend any time developing sort of how he learned to do this and how, 
he learned to dream of others, and then, you know, you get no sense of how any of this happened. It just sort of randomly falls into everybody's lap. And so you're even left wondering, was she dreaming at all, or was he dreaming for her? So it becomes, you know, how was all this started? How did it all come to to sort of fall the way it did? And you never really get anything satisfying. And, I mean, if you're up for your everybody who mattered to the story at all dying, go for it, you know, because this, this, this one wraps it up all nice and neat by the end, you know. But, man, it could have, it could have went so many directions. And I was, I was watching it because I'm developing a story about dreams too. You know, that's part of one of the elements of my story. And I was like, well, let's see how they use it. And like a fucking MacGuffin. I, 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 it, I was worried that they were close to my concept, like all writers are. It's like, oh man, here's another one that uses dreams in some sort of way. Now I feel really uncomfortable, because I'm working on a concept, sort of, sort of, sort of, the thinnest skin like it. But it's not really, you know, it's, it, it was so different that I laughed, when I fi- finished it, I was like, what was I worried about? But at the same time, it just, it gave me perspective on the concept. And you kind of have to do more when you're w- working with weird ideas that are, I don't want to say magical, just spooky. You know, anything that's incomprehensible you have to work a little bit harder to make it comprehensible you know in in trying to create cthulhu films for for mass market you know you have to work a little bit harder to make the indescribable describable which means you have to give it features and you have to give it features that it can be recognized by and this this movie ultimately kind of fails it doesn't it doesn't have enough of those features. It didn't have enough sinews and connective tissue to kind of keep you engaged the whole time. So I will say that is its ultimate fault, you know, downfall. But it doesn't make it a bad film. It just doesn't make it a very good one. But I think that's going to be all the time I've got for this film. Um, yeah, it's a little short because... Film's a little short too, <laughs> on top of all of that. It just, there wasn't a lot going for it, you know. And I mean, the parts of it that did work, the the sort of mother in peril that Annette Benning can deliver worked. Um, the sort of loss of child, killer, monstrous action stuff worked. Um, the dynamic at the end between. Um, Robert Downey Jr. and Annette Benning. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. makes a believable sort of suspended youth killer here who who is a sort of man-child and, and acts in violence towards a mother figure or wife figure for him, but a mother figure for somebody he's kidnapped. And it's like you can kind of see what they were going for but it all just comes out of left field from nowhere. Doesn't feel like it kind of gives us anything other than Robert Downey Jr. in a nurse outfit. And I, I am here for that. I am here for that. And everybody needs to have witnessed this. Okay. I get it. Nobody wants to picture their perfect Iron Man in full stockings and a nurse outfit. But let's go. It's there. You should want to see this. And I, I hope he... I hope in some way he sees this review and is reminded of it because me oh man ada rada rada (laughs) i don't know what to say about that part of this it just kind of gets weird fast and furious and i don't know i don't know just kind of took me out of it for a second (laughs) because i was too busy giggling about stuff so 
But I think that's all the time I can squeeze out of this little this little morsel. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure, Dungeon Dwellers. Make sure you leave a like. It let's YouTube know that you enjoy this content and you want to see more. And they may one day decide to pay me to do this. And then I can do it full time and bring you content 24-7. And, you know, that's the dream, right? Right? No, nah, it's not the dream. So don't worry about it. Make sure you subscribe, though. For more of that good, beautiful bean footage and content like this that you enjoy, make sure you ring the bell so that you get all the notifications and those videos get sent directly out to you. But thank you so much for joining me on this lovely dream of a adventure with you guys today, dungeon dwellers and horror fanatics alike. I hope to see you on our next adventures. But until then, night night. Go to bed, get some sleep, and hopefully you won't be dreaming of any future events either. <laughs>